now, you probably won't feel like giving me any when you find out what my presentation is about. Uh, this is, well, it's actually kind of, yeah, it's kind of the subject of my dissertation. And uh, the rest of this has been quite funny, and I don't think you'll get very many laughs out of this one. And if you do, you won't feel good about yourselves after. Uh, my dissertation is about, uh, basically, the presentation of serial killers in popular culture. And here you go. Uh, here are some people that have been compared to Myra Hindley on the internet. Against their will, against their wishes, against their knowledge most of the time. This is Chris from Hollyoaks. And as you can see in this photo, he looks quite a bit like this photo. And uh, that went around Twitter for a bit with people going, doesn't he look like Myra Hindley? I doubt he was very happy about that. But this gives you something of a clue as to how ingrained her image is in our culture that we can all take the best out of Chris from Hollyoaks because of it. Oh, here we go. This is Marcus Harvey's Myra painting, which was very controversial in, uh, well, the 1997 sensation exhibit. These, I don't know if you can see, are all children's handprints, which, um, yeah, did not make people very happy. This is from Hell, which uh, is a very good graphic novel, you should definitely read it, about Jack the Ripper. Uh, but they managed to get a bit of Brady and Hindley in there, which uh, I think you should try and get a bit of Brady and Hindley into everything, really. It's a uh, real fun that way. Um, Chris Morris gave it a bash. This is him pretending to be Jarvis Cocker. And uh, if Jarvis Cocker had any balls, he would have totally covered this song because it was ace. And it's about being in love with Myra Hindley, which tells you all you need to know about our culture, really. Um, and here are some lyrics from this song, which I really don't want to have to read out to you since they're mostly quite rude. Um, and here's him admiring a pinup girl with Myra Hindley's head selling tape to the top, which. Uh, he also finished it with uh, Pogo on that new twat, which I think is one of the best lyrics. This was a Big Brother piss take, which also included Myra Hindley's face. Uh, this was on Beta. I don't know if you remember Beta. It was up there with Albino and Black Sheep back in the 2000s when you had nothing better to do as a student. Um, this is Russell Young's Bank Robber series, where, to be honest, he's just trying to earn some money doing some prints of Kamos and... Uh, Things Ockerty looking like Brady and Hindley. And I remember some people I knew had that on their Facebooks, Chris, for example. This is Douglas Gordon being very lazy and yet getting to pretend he's an artist by putting a blonde wig on and saying he looks like Kirk Bain, Andy Warhol, Myra Hindley and Marilyn Monroe. Which he doesn't, but there you go. This is a really fucking weird play which has Myra Hindley and Brady as like bondage obsessives who are actually Nazis. I think it's based on a massive misunderstanding of history. But they still made a play of it, which I hope you're enjoying seeing there. I didn't. This is an actual bookshop that has been advertising itself using photos of them because obviously, what do you want in a bookshop? A picture of Ian Brady wearing a Save the Children badge or Myra Hindley in a Blue Peter badge for that matter. Who doesn't want that? Well, apparently that's what you want. This is Club Myra, an actual nightclub. I don't know if any of you have been. This is an actual electro club in London. And I don't know if you can read that. Boof on your hair and learn to swear. This is the sound of London, you C words. Well, that's their slogan. And you can get promotional stickers with no face on the rest of your mugshot. You can draw your own face, you can stick someone else's face, you can draw anything on it there. You know, because her image is so ingrained in our society that it's just Obviously, we recognise it without a face. This was also one of their promotional photos, which I don't know if you can see. They've replaced Ian Brady here with Michael Jackson. <laughs> this was their flyer. So, I'm not really sure what they were going for there. I mean, in what way are they similar apart from nobbling kids? Well, well. Here are some uh, films about them. And you can see the actors and actresses have obviously really gone for doing their custodial show. Thing, which, um, you know, I think it just goes to show. I'm not sure what it goes to show, to be honest. Um, this is Maxine Peake, who's a very good actress. This is Moira Hindley, wearing exactly the same outfit, with the same blue paper, the same brooch, the same boots. They've done it to perfection, you know? This is Ian Brady over here, looking rather like your nana's boyfriend, to be honest. I mean, you couldn't tell if you didn't notice him. Why has he got a point glass on his head? Don't know. Why has he got a shirt wrapped around his face? Don't know. The most cheerful looking murderer you'll ever see. This is Edmund Gorey's graphic novel, The Lonesome Couple, which was also based on them. Uh, this is probably the only one which hasn't actually replicated the custodial photo. It's actually made them sound well boring. So uh, I think he's sort of actually done better than the rest of them by making them sound dull. 
This is what some people on the internet have done for fun and tried to sell to other people on the internet who enjoy that kind of thing. I don't know if you've noticed the eBay logos over there, which indicates that there's actually a market for this kind of thing. So um, I don't really know what I'm saying here, apart from it's well weird that everybody totally lost Myra Higley's hair. And I have to say, so do I, I really miss that wig.